on this day, the 18th of January, 1788, the first fleet arrives in Australia at Botany Bay. Aboard are 1,400 people, of which around 800 are convicts. They're on board 11 ships, and it has just taken them 250 days to make the journey from Portsmouth, England. This is the beginning of Australia. The story of the first fleet begins some years earlier. In 1770, James Cook's voyage to the Pacific and his charting of the eastern part of Australia as well as New Zealand was when Sir Joseph Banks, a great um, scientist, botanist, that's why James Cook named Botany Bay Botany Bay because Sir Joseph Banks was so interested in the plants, the flora and the fauna around that bay. He also gave his name to Banks Peninsula in New Zealand and the Banksia flower. So, he's got, his name's gone about a bit. But he, with a man, the Earl of Sandwich, Lord Sandwich, um, advocated settling New South Wales. So Banks had obviously seen the eastern coast of Australia and was impressed by it. And when Cook and Banks and that lot had voyaged along the east coast of Australia, it had been a particularly wet uh, few years for the east coast of Australia. So for them, they were looking at a verdant, thriving, fertile land. If they had seen Australia with fires roaring and a drought ensuing, they might have thought differently, but they didn't. So what they were advocating was a settlement of American loyalists who had been displaced by the American Revolution, together with some Chinese and South Sea Islanders who would be settling in this territory. Initially, they didn't want any convicts. They wanted it to be free settlements, um, much like many of the settlements in the United States. They didn't want convicts. However, Lord Sydney, that's where the city gets its name, the Home Secretary at the time, made the decision to settle New South Wales with convicts. Now, at this point, Australia as a name wasn't really used for Australia. They used the name New Holland uh, as opposed to New Zealand, both named after Dutch places. New South Wales was the name that James Cook had given uh, the eastern coast of Australia. So most of the time they called it New South Wales, which included almost all of eastern Australia so the name Australia came along a lot later. So the reason he wanted to settle convicts in Australia, well, well there was a couple of reasons, and one of them was because they used to transport convicts to the United, well, to the American colonies. And obviously it was now independent, and they had no desire to take British convicts. Another one was, well, the French were nosing about in the South Pacific at this point, and they knew about this. So they thought they needed naval bases and in the South Pacific to keep an eye on the French, and they needed settlements to prevent the French from trying to settle territories themselves. Another big reason was Australia was so far away. Who would really want to go there? At this time, 
like the first fleet, it took 250 days for them to go from England to Sydney. That's not far off a year of travelling. And then how do you get back? How long does it take to get back? Another 250 days? If you went to the American colonies, let's say you went to Upper or Lower Canada, Nova Scotia, or even the Caribbean, it might take you two months. Maybe less if you're lucky, if you get a good wind behind you. And you can come back. It's not impossible. And people did come back from the American colonies. They came back from Jamestown, they came back from Plymouth. There was a there were people going back and forth all the time. People went back to England and they came back again. Going out to Australia is a one-way journey. It's too far to just decide to come back. Although, for many of these convicts, some of them had seven-year terms of exile, others had 14 years. So theoretically, once you've done your seven years or 14 years, you could go back to England, but how do you get back? Most of them would end up staying. And that was the point. There weren't going to be very many people who would volunteer to travel 15,000 miles. However, if you've got convicts, you can make them go. And by the time they've done their time, they probably won't be able to come back anyway. They'll have, they'll have put down roots, they'll have kids, they'll have a job, they'll have land. There won't be much reason to come back. So, in September of 1786, Captain Arthur Phillips was appointed the Commodore of the fleet. And he was promised that he would be the first governor, which he would be. Um, they were all also um, mandated to make Norfolk Island a secondary colony, which they end up, ended up doing. And Norfolk Island is half... It's kind of nearer to New Zealand, it's halfway between, well, nearer to New Zealand, but it's in the Tasman Sea. And it's a territory of Australia now. And a small little island, but it was used as a convict um, settlement for a while. Then it was evacuated, and then the troublemakers from the bounty ended up living there. And yeah, there's about two and a half thousand people living there at the moment, I think. Maybe three thousand. So it's not a t- huge island, but it is a very handy island to have. Anyway, so that was one of the things he was told to do. And then it was time to fit out the fleet, which they did. Now this <coughs> fleet, this expedition, this incredible feat, was very well planned. Throughout the journey, about 1,500 people, about only 48 died, and they had 28 births on board. 48 out of 1,500 comes to about 3% which, for the time, is incredible. So, they were, the convicts were taken care of there. When they were infested with lice, they were given new clothes, they were fed and watered well. Um, When they arrived in Rio de Janeiro, they went around the world. The first port was in the Canaries, the second port was in Rio, and in the third port, which is in Cape Town, they were fed fresh mutton and beef, vegetables and bread. They wanted to fatten them up for the worst part of the journey, which is through the southern ocean, towards uh, Van Diemen's Land, Tasmania. So they actually were purposely filling them up to make sure that they wouldn't die en masse on the way. 
So if you're a criminal and you're convicted, going to Australia at this point was probably not too bad. Because the other option was that you'd be executed. So getting free food and decent food on a journey to Australia doesn't sound all too bad. Although, if you're on the woman's uh, ship, it, it sounds like they had a bit of a party on the woman's ship. Promiscuity was rampant, apparently, between the women and the crew and the women and the marines on board. So I wonder how many of those births came from that. Hmm. Anyway, so... As I said, it was very well organized. There was going to be a Royal Naval Escort of two vessels. The one that um, Captain Phillips would man would be the Sirius, which is HMS Sirius, which is a great name for a ship. There were six convict ships. I think there's like two female ships. And there was three supply ships. Now, this was not the the usual settlement uh, story, the ones that went to Jamestown, or the ones that went to um, Plymouth, both of which were disasters, badly planned. Half the people died. This was very well planned. They had a surgeon and a uh, assistant surgeon on board. They had a judge advocate on board. They had a surveyor on board. They were ready for everything. They were ready to build a colony. So, at Cape Town, as I said, they also brought on pigs and, f and fowl of all sorts. They brought on ca cattle and sheep. So these were the first sheep in Australia. And sheep in Australia was going to make a lot of these convicts very wealthy. So they were ready for everything. Anyway, so many of the convicts, most of the convicts, were from England. They'd been convicted in England. Although 14 were from the American colonies. I'm not sure whether that includes the United States or whether it's just the Canadas and the maritime colonies and the Caribbean. And there was quite a number of Irish on there as well convicted in England, and there's about 12 black people in there, so convicted in England, but from the colonies in the Caribbean. Probably some of them came over after the revolution in America. So, it was quite a mixed group, mixed bag. So, on the 13th of May, they left Portsmouth. First, they went to, as I said, the Canaries, then Rio, and some of the Marines and the crew from the ship went and had a merry old time in Rio. Sounds like they had a good time. Then they went to Cape Town. At the time it was a Dutch colony. And they got their supplies, and they got their animals and some plants as well. Then the hardest part of the journey was sailing across the Southern Ocean which is quite a violent, horrible ocean to sail in at the best of times. But they managed to get to Australia without losing one ship. Again, which was very unusual for the day. Then they got to Botany Bay. Now, Botany Bay had been given glowing reviews by... Joseph Banks and Captain Cook, but they found that it was too open to the elements, too shallow, and the trees around the bay were like stone. They couldn't cut them down, they had to blow them out of the ground to knock them over. So that's when they decided to go up to Port Jackson, which is where Sydney Cove is. So that's the story of the First Fleet's journey to Australia.
the story of the First Fleet is one which every Australian learns about and which is important in Australia's past because without this there would be no Australia. The First Fleet has become mythologized. It has become something that every Australian knows and feels something about. This was the beginning. From these, this motley crew of 800 convicts and a, f you know, a few Royal Marines and a very few free settlers, from that motley crew of ne'er-do-wells and chancers, a great nation was born. Where they landed, Botany Bay, there's an airport there now, where they went to in Port Jackson, Sydney Cove. One of the great cities of the world stands there now, with Sydney Opera House on one side, the bridge on the other, and the tall buildings overlooking you, ahead of you. It's incredible to think that in, what, 230 years, they went from that to what they have today. If you like these videos, come back for more tomorrow. Like, subscribe, and comment.